Right, we're going to uh, talk about tissue fluid, and this is the arterial end of the capillary bed. This is the venule end of the capillary bed. So this end, you'll find much higher hydrostatic pressure because it's closer to where the heart has contracted, which generates the pressure. Um, so we've got the capillary. Inside the capillary, we have plasma. And we then have the tissue fluid, which bathes body cells in tissue fluid. You then get an exchange of oxygen, glucose, things that the cells need for processes such as respiration will diffuse into the cells and waste products like carbon dioxide and urea will diffuse out of the cells and into the tissue fluid. Any excess tissue fluid that's not reabsorbed into the capillary at the venule end is, reabsor is absorbed into the lymph vessel, into lymph and forming lymph which joins back with the blood in a vein later on. So you have tissue fluid being forced out at the arterial end and you have tissue fluid being reabsorbed at the venule end. You've got high hydrostatic pressure which causes the tissue fluid to be forced out at the arterial end and you've got a very negative water potential which you find in the capillary which brings water back in by osmosis at the venule end. What creates that really negative water potential in the capillary is the fact that large plasma proteins are too big to pass through the capillary wall. So they remain inside the capillary and they lower the water potential. A couple of questions you could be asked. Um, so what is found in the blood plasma before the capillary? So over here, before the blood reaches the capillary bed, you've got glucose, amino acid, fatty acids, oxygen, large plasma proteins, anything that you'd find dissolved in, in blood plasma. Once we get to the capillary bed, you then your small soluble molecules will be forced out of the capillary due to the gaps in the capillary wall due to the high hydrostatic pressure. These things are glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and oxygen. Things that are left behind in the plasma, which are too big, even though you've got really high hydrostatic pressure, they're too big to fit through the gaps in the capillary wall. And these are your large plasma proteins. So they're the things that lower the water potential in the capillary. Um, you might get asked a question, um, so what is there a higher concentration of that's returning to the capillary at the venule end? So be a higher concentration of carbon dioxide and urea. So any of your waste products, be more of them returning to the capillary um, at the end of the capillary bed and then gets taken around the body to be excreted. This is a classic long answer question about how tissue fluid is formed and returned to the circulatory system. So you've got filtration here, you've then got your tissue fluid where you get the exchange and you get the reabsorption. So the marking points are hydrostatic pressure is higher at the arterial end. So water or fluid passes out. The large plasma proteins remain in the capillary bed, lowering the water potential in the capillary bed. Water moves back into the venule end or the venous end of the capillary by osmosis and any excess tissue fluid um, gets drained into the lymphatic system. We're going to go through a couple of scenarios which could influence whether you have a buildup of tissue fluid or if you have less tissue fluid. The things that could affect the amount of tissue fluid formed is whether the hydrostatic pressure has changed or whether the water potential in the capillary has changed. So here we've got Quashiorco, we've got a lack of protein, lack of your large plasma proteins in the blood. Ends up with a large swollen abdomen, which is actually a buildup of tissue fluid. So how has that happened? Well, your water potential is going to be higher inside the capillary. So you've got less plasma proteins, so you've got your higher water potential, it's less negative. You've got fewer proteins lowering the water potential. So as a result, you get more tissue fluid formed at the arterial end. But more importantly, you've got less water being reabsorbed into the capillary by osmosis. Because you've got a, you don't have as negative a water potential inside of the capillary, so you get less reabsorption. Here we've got some swollen ankles, swollen feet, and this person's got high blood pressure. So a result of this, we've got higher hydrostatic pressure. Um, so more tissue fluid is actually created. And because the hydrostatic pressure is higher inside the capillary, less water can be reabsorbed. 
We've got a person here who is dehydrated. This would be quite a challenging application question um, because there are, you need to sort of link several ideas together. You've actually got, if you've got less water in the blood, so you're dehydrated, so it means you've got less water in your blood, you're going to have a lower hydrostatic pressure and you're also going to have a lower water potential because you've got less water in the capillary. Both of these things will result in less tissue fluid being formed at the arterial end. And because you've got a more negative water potential in the capillary, because there's a lack of water, more water will be reabsorbed into the capillary by osmosis. So you're going to have very, very little tissue fluid accumulating. You're going to have less tissue fluid being drained back into the lymph.